Okay, I'm going to do the passion fruit. I'll show you what I do with the passion fruit. So we got standard uh, polycarbonate mould. These are the domes. Uh, going with a copper, and I'm just going to flick this in, right? Really lightly. Remember, whatever flex you've got in here, when you turn the chocolate out, is magnified twice. So the tiniest little speck here will look double when you actually turn them out. Okay, I doubt if you can pick that up on the colors I'm gonna do for the passion fruit. I've got green, uh, an orange, a yellow, and this is a flame red. Um, these ones I make up myself. So just do green. Um, I tempered these, they're down at, they're at um, 26, uh, sorry, 29 degrees or so. Uh, should we do a dot in there? I'm not going to use a gloved finger for this one because I want to feel, I just want to do the tiniest white on the inside. Right? Tiniest, tiniest swipe. You can see there. Tiny swipe, right. Reason I'm not going to wear a glove is I want to be quite accurate with this. Right? And also, I think you can feel when the cocoa butter is starting to crystallise. If you swirl it around the mould too much, what happens is you over crystallise it in the mould. So that when you shell it and you put your chocolate in and you turn it out, Lots of chunks don't adhere to the chocolate. Okay, so I just want the tiniest, tiniest smear in each one of those, right? So you can feel it because this is at 29 degrees. This one, you can feel it start to set as soon as you get it into the mold. Just make sure you've got really clean hands when you do this. Okay, so there's the first layer. Done. Just gonna let that dry for less than a minute and I'll start on the next colours. That's ready to go, ready to shell. That will be dried in the next in the next minute or so. That will be dry, and then I can start shelling. Okay, these were the um, these were the shells. They're dry. They took a minute, minute and a half to dry. So I've got uh, tempered white chocolate, nine point two. Uh, give it a tap, right? And it will just get any of the air bubbles back up to the top before we start pouring, right? So we're going to go. Straight in. Okay. 
you know, uh, work out how much your moulds take, right? On average, I know this one takes 440, right? I know this one takes 440, so I do a little bit more than that, uh, so that I don't end up with a mountain of excess. Uh, I'm just gonna wipe that in. It's not gonna start melting the cocoa butter yet. Uh, the other thing about m just measuring how much um, chocolate you need, you won't have excess running all over your mould, right? So, give it a tap. So, get all the air bubbles up to the top. It. Waiting for those strands just waiting for those strands just to stop, all right? Okay. I was pull this to the edge for this one. should have nice clean edges All right that's going to go upside down now I'm just going to leave that at an angle at room temperature for about 12 to 15 minutes All right uh, as I said this one I'm just going to leave on the side there up at an angle just allow some of the airflow to go through uh, white I tend to leave upside down uh, white and milk I leave upside down um, Dark chocolate, I tend to face upwards. I find that works for me, it just gives me a, a, a better shell. Um, there you go, shelling. So, 15 minutes, and then we'll have a look at it. You might find that some of it started to um, crystallize and retract a tiny bit. So, these have had. Um, about, they were about 15 minutes. I won't turn it upside down because they'll come out. Uh, so this had about 15 minutes upside down. See the shells there, all nice and clean. Molds all nice and clean. There isn't chocolate all over it. And then I put them in the fridge for about six minutes actually. And they, you can see that they've started to retract. Uh, the majority of these are out now. So that is, you can see the shine on there. Okay. So these are the moulds I did earlier. All those padded fruit and 